Hello, today I'm going to be looking at this servo tester, but just before we get into that, a quick reminder, please like or dislike this video if you didn't like it, comment down below, please subscribe if you haven't already, and if you can find it, click on that little bell icon, it'll tell you when I'm uploading stuff. So a servo tester, I hear you say, what's so complicated about that? Normally we just have this little like one or two dollar twiddly thing, which I, I've got one around, I can't find it, uh, just to make sure we can align a server correctly, we can get the center point, we can make sure it works. Recently I've reviewed a bunch of the Toolkit RC products, basically chargers like uh, this latest one, the M8S, which is a charger and has a load of inbuilt tools like servo testing is one of the things where you can make your servo waggle back and forth. This new thing from Toolkit RC, which is just called the Toolkit RC Servo Tester, is a whole new beast. Um, it's not going to be for everybody, it's pretty much for people that really need to know what their servos are doing and more importantly what the power consumption is. I'll just get out of the box and show you what we actually get here. And um, you'll notice one thing about it, it has a screen. It has a screen, um, it has inputs there for an XC60, it has an output there as an XC60 as well. It has got eight servo channels here which you can drive four of them independently and you can do so because it's got this other uh, input here which can use PDOM or PPM or SBUS so you can put in a receiver and use your radio to control things and you can exactly see what your servers are doing. This is going to be, I think, for the people who are into their planes more because we're talking servos and when you're talking about hooking up lots of servos and what you might be doing uh, with your controller because most uh, traditional planes, we're talking four servos uh, for the ailerons, elevator and rudder. You might have a couple more extra if, you, if you've if got flaps. You might have something like a pan tilt mechanism, that's another two. You're already up to eight servos. And what we sometimes do when we're thinking about how we're going to run this is uh, some people might just put in a big beck to run them all. Other people might think, oh, my ESC's got an inbuilt beck of eight amps, four amps, two amps. Is that going to be enough? because there's like a rule of thumb about using one amp per servo. So using this, the idea is you can move your sticks around and you can see exactly how much power those servos are actually taking, which I think would be an interesting test to do. There is also, in the bottom of the box, a little USB cable. This is firmware upgradable, and I think uh, Toolkit RC told me there's new firmware available, so I'm gonna see about upgrading it before I do anything. And there is a brief manual. There's normally, and I guess it's gonna be the same, um, a more verbose one online that you can look at as well. So let's hook this up and see what it can do. Okay, so I updated the firmware, which is pretty easy. It's just a case of plugging in the USB cable here to a Windows PC and it appears as a drive and you drag the firmware over to it. I say Windows PC because I tried this on my Mac and it didn't appear as a drive. Um, so I don't know if that's a problem. I'll report that back and see if they've got anything to mention about that. But Fortunately, I've got access to Windows boxes as well. So I'll turn it on and uh, it would have flashed up the firmware there, which is 1.11, I think. Now, if we, I'm just gonna zoom in, hold down this button. We've got some of the lots of options you can do. There's a voltage output you notice that says off. This is, we can produce voltage out of there. Um, I don't, it's, it's a bit vague about this or I don't understand it very well. I don't know if it's because you might want to drive something out of there and that's useful or it's if you're trying to put out a certain amount of power uh, then you might want to use it as a discharge thing. For normal servos that are like you know five volts it's it's not a big deal and people using big servos that know what they're talking about can read the instructions and you'll understand. Anyway lots of stuff here. I'm keeping the beeper on I'm afraid. Um, yeah, all sorts. Let's exit out of that. So what we've got here is we've got the four channels for our independent control, which are one, two, three, four here. And then you'll notice S4 is labeled again. So basically anything you plug in there will mirror S4 and thus you can do eight channels that way. Uh, so let's plug a servo in and we'll show you exactly what happens. I've got uh, a bunch of these. These are Tower Pro servos, which are sort of my chosen server of choice at the moment. I'm going to plug this into S1. You know, just for good measure, I might just plug four of them in. So let's plug in uh, S1 to S4 as we've got them lying around. 
as then it saves me doing it later. Right, I now have to figure out an angle where we're going to be able to watch the servos and the screen. Oh, I just have to lift the screen up and down when we want to see the screen in more detail. Like now. So, what we've got here, let's go into one of these and, and I'll show you. If we press return, we've got an input. And our input has a variety of things. We'll start here because this is um, internal linear. Um, I'll just set this going. I'll press the pause key. And we will see now that we've got servo 1 moving back and forth which is represented here and we've got all this stuff going on here what is that we ask ourselves well what we've got here is the amount of milliamps that's happening speed is not used at this point and the count the number of times we've done it and we've got a little graph going on at any time we can pause that if we want to we can rewind down the graph to see spikes and stuff which is all very good now we've got other modes and other things we can do. So at the moment it's linear, we can change that to stage. What stage does is it does, at the moment this is a two part. There's a figure called PS, there's one called PE and there's another one in the middle called PC which is uh, start, centre and end and what's it doing is every second it's rapidly moving between those two points and if we wanted to whoop, we could also add in PC which is the centre point now every second we're a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand and what we can then do if we wanted to is say okay let's change one of these points and we can change another one of these points and have them going differently and again once we go back here we can see this on a graph now you see this faster movement does seem to increase the max milliamps that it uses about seven six eight there and we've also got a speed thing coming in now what the speed is is the amount of time in milliseconds it's taken to get from one of those pc or PE settings to the other one so you can time your servos uh, for specific intervals now if we put it back to linear a second we've got a step here so one use second step and one millisecond speed we can make this ridiculously slow if we slow things down really slow look at the amount of power consumption it, it goes ridiculously little. Similarly though, should we speed things up by doing the step rate differently? If I step this up to 5 u6 and now we have a look, we're getting something like 864. Look at those big spikes, 875 milliamps used um, as we're, we're moving the servo. All very interesting stuff. So aside from those internal modes, we can change the input over to, I'll start with P1 first. As P1 is this little thing. So we can now use this little rotary knob, which hides away when you don't want it, to move our servo. And we've got a little, a little notch where it sort of centers back. The center is not super accurate. There's some give in it, so it's not exactly on 1500, but it's close enough. So of course we've got other servos plugged in. So I could just as easy go to uh, number two and say, I also want that one controlled by this knob, which is this one. And now what we've got is two servos doing their thing. And all of these can be set up completely independently. Um, so another thing we can do, we, we can change the range of the output if we only want that to move a certain amount of, uh, of distance. But if we try another one, we've got key. Key's quite interesting because it allows you to measure very accurately the distance between these three points. What I'll do is I'll just 
pop this back to 1500 as it's about the midpoint. So if I exit that now, what I do is just go down to this and I can press that button quickly and go to each of these things independently to give myself a timing. So going all the way back from P to PS, for example, gives me the speed it took um, and the amount of milliamps. And we got a slight difference there between, I notice, Server 1 and Server 2, even though they've got the same brand. We'll go back up again. Oh, we've gone back to internal. One on there, I might just slow that down. <laughs> Right, now the other thing we've got, S5. S5 is this port here. So if I go along and I plug in this, uh, it's gonna supply the power for me and I've just got this attached to um, S bus of a quad. And what I'll do, so that's set up. We've, we've then got options here. So we've got S bus, PWM, PPM, and SBUS again. And once we got onto SBUS, we've got a choice of channels. Bizarrely, it starts on channel zero instead of channel one. So channel zero equals channel one effectively. So let me do that for all of them. I think most of these are set up, but let me just, um, so yeah, that's already set up. That's set up and that's set up. Right, we turn my radio on. It's a little bit tricky because I want to zoom in on the screen, but I need to show those as well. And I also want to show my radio. So what I'm going to do is, is if I move this joystick, channel one, channel two, channel three, and channel four. And we can kind of see with that, we can move them all and chatter them around and really go for it and see how many million powers we're drawing. So if I'm going to go really, I'm going to really bash the six around now and have a look. And if we review that, I mean, we've got some real surges there. You see we, we're drawing different colors for each channel. And by wiggling the sticks, I was able to get over one amp um, on channels two and three with um, almost an amp on the others. And by using this, you can obviously work out if your servers are gonna be fast enough, how many amps they're likely to pull, and you can figure out what back you need or if your ESC is able to handle that current and what's likely to happen. And you know, if you're just flying a wing and you've got two servos, it's probably not that much of a problem. I think this is gonna come into its own when you're talking about models with maybe flaps and crow braking, maybe multiple servos for ailerons. If you've got large scale models, you're talking like 10 or 12 servos potentially. Talking of which, we can plug some more in to find out about this socket here. I found some rando servos in my box, so I'm gonna plug all these in. So, fully populated there. We've got eight servos all hanging around there. And one of the settings you can do, quite helpfully, is if you want everything to, to basically be the same uh, as it is, you can set your input to S1. So S1 being the first servo. So if we do that for uh, all of them, then they should all move exactly the same. And we'll move S1 onto linear. So we've now got eight servos all jiggling around doing their thing. So the ones on channel four are mirroring so the four extras we put in are the same as channel four. We can easily turn that off by, so let's set that to channel S5. If we set channel four to P1, which is the, the rotor there, we can just move essentially five on their own and generating up to about three milliamps there. Or 3,000, three amps I should say. Which is quite a lot. 
So I don't think it's too unfair to call this quite a niche product, but if it does the sort of thing you want, this, uh, the detail you can get out of it, and the amount of testing you can do is really quite impressive. So if you're wanting to know exactly the amount of power all your servos put out, depending on your movements of your sticks, or in general, or if it's very crucial about how long it takes for a surface to go from here to here, or checking that your servos you're intending to use are doing exactly the same amount and exactly the same amount of power, uh, and take exactly the same amount of time. This is about your only option. So it's incredibly impressive what it can do. It's just not going to appeal to everybody. And if you're a quad flyer, it's definitely not going to apply to you. I, I would have quite liked to have had it for a certain thing. The, the bigs are up there, quite a simple little plane, but it, it uses eight servos of, of what I've got there. And I, I would have liked to have checked it out and make sure I had the power covered properly, rather than just like taking a guess about what I was going to put on a separate back and what I was going to run off the ESC because there's a mix of different things running from other things. It's a bit weird. But anyway, a very, very useful tool for the type of people that need it. This has been the Hobbymate RC ST8 uh, servo tester and was kindly supplied for review by Hobby RC, so many thanks to them. And of course, you'll find links down below from where you can get this if you want to check it out in more detail. Well, I hope that review's been useful and I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.